Hi, I'm Rob Booker. It's Wednesday, February 17th, 2056, 7.09 a.m. Pacific Time in the U.S., and we are going to look at the British Pound U.S. Dollar four-hour chart. I have been wanting to look at this chart. I hope that's okay with someone. I think you guys are absolutely spectacular. It's a joy to be here. I'm thrilled to be hanging out with you today. I hope that um, you're enjoying your day wherever you're at. If you don't mind sharing with us where you are joining us from, I would love to hear where you're from, where you're joining us from right now. Crystal and Paul Volker. Volker. Welcome, Paul. Ireland, Manchester, Jupiter, my. Where's my? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Are you in Vancouver? I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Barcelona, Fractal, Calgary. Could I look at mentally versus market sentiment in Euro? Ed, Monterey, Mexico, Malaysia. Are you in KL, Crystal? Stuttgart. Gluten Morgan. That's what I say when I have bread for breakfast. Republic of Texas, Italy. Wow. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Miles, Texans are not allowed. That is funny. Here's the pound dollar four-hour chart. Let's rock and roll and let you know exactly what's going on. Oh, Greece has been renamed um, Goldman um, Sachsistan because now Goldman Sachs owns Greece. Here we go. This is the four-hour British pound, U.S. dollar four-hour chart. It looks like the British pound, U.S. dollar four-hour chart is trying to recover and recuperate back up words. Is it going to be able to do that? And if it does, where might it be going? Let me tell you, peoples, I think that if this currency pair can rise above this, I'm going to make this trend line blue, and we're going to call it an entry line. We're not going to color it dark green. We're going to color it blue. Why? Because we're crazy. We're crazy like that. Don't you, buy, don't you mess with us. If we break and close above this blue trend line here, this tiny blue trend line, we're definitely, in my opinion, going all the way up to that green, longer-term trend line from the four-hour chart. Howsomever, the currency pair has just finished barely falling below the 800. Barely, barely, barely. This currency pair, if it starts to fall back lower, if it falls below the 62 exponential moving average on the one-hour chart, the H is not silent. If it falls below that 62 exponential moving average, I think it's going to fall further, at least to the 200 simple moving average, and it's going to set up a move. Drum roll, please. To this trend line out in space. No, that's not what I meant to draw. Although now that I drew it, I bet you that's where it goes. No, it's going to go down to this previous low. We color this. I don't know. I don't know. Color it orange. Color it orange. And that, my friends, is where the currency pair might find its resting spot if it falls instead of rises. And remember, the new trend is down. Um, this currency pair has been brutalized, hasn't it? I mean, just brutalized. And the, you know, some. I remember Boris Schlossberg this morning was talking about how the. UK employment numbers were bad or what, blah, 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 who knows. Listen, point is, this currency pair falls, it's probably going to fall through the 62 exponential moving average. Let's zoom in a bit here. And then get to the 200 simple moving average. That'd be a nice place for a stop loss to break even. And then fall all the way to the orange trend line. However, if it rises, we've got a plan for that too. And we know what we'd want to do. Let me give you a view also. I haven't done this in a long time. And for people who are missing this stuff, let's see here. MACD parameters. 30, 65, 23. I know some people got really excited. Oh, I hate this MACD. This is the MACD that I hate. I hate that MACD. Oh, well. So what? 
We'll just deal with it. What I would also look for is, was the currency pair divergent when it pops back up, or is it divergent now? The answer is no. There's no divergence. In the absence of any kind of divergence where it's making higher highs on price, but high, uh, lower highs on MACD, or vice versa, I, if it's not doing any of that, then my suspicion is that the currency pair is going to correct back down, and the trend sort of rules the day on that type of a situation. If it's a pound yen is falling along with that, pound Swiss is falling along with that, boy, I'd certainly love to restack my pound Swiss down short, but that's a subject for another day and another time. Why the 62 exponential moving average says MMMMMCOPT1 close parenthesis squiggly? Um, why the 62 exponential moving average? Um, well, the answer is the 62 exponential moving average has certainly just been a favorite of mine for quite some time. I spent an extraordinary amount of time, a huge part of my life, simply backtesting separate moving averages. And the 62 exponential moving average just really came out on top as a member of the Arizona Rules team. And the Arizona Rules are a set of parameters using moving averages and oscillators that I use to judge um, the phases of the market. And all these moving averages that I place on the chart would be placed on the chart no matter what the time frame. So not simply for the one hour, but also for the daily 30 minute, 13 minute, seven and a half minute, and the world famous 261 minute chart. That was a brilliant question. I want to give uh, Ed a particularly bonus amount of congratulations. And then MMCOPT1, close squiggly parentheses, I'd like to give another shout out to, to him or her to say congratulations on an excellent question. All of your questions are excellent. Did I abandon the 5 and the 13? No, I just, um, they've been at school and I'll pick them up later. No, uh, abandon them. Abandoning them is such a harsh way to say it. Boyke, I simply actually moved on to trading methods that were more profitable than that. But I would gladly, at any given point in time, go back to trading the 5 and the 13. Although I would not like to go back and be 5 or 13 years old again. But I would go back and trade the 5, 13, 62 anytime. However, the methods that I'm trading now are simply more profitable. So that's an older method. Still works fine. But it's an older method, and I like what I'm doing now much better. Jez says, so for the entry on the GU short on the one hour, we wait for a close below the 62 exponential moving average, and the profit target is 200 simple moving average. That's the answer, and that is yes. And at the 200 simple moving average, you might move your stop loss to break even and target the orange trend line, which targets or goes all the way down to 1.5592, or you can round it up to 1.5600. And that's everything you ever wanted to know about the pound, dollar, one hour, and four hour, but we're afraid to ask. Isn't the MACD setting slower than the normal variety? Abel asks a brilliant question. Abel, you have just won a copy of my book in Japanese. The answer is yes. The MACD is slower than usual. Uh, I took a lot of flack about this for a long time um, because it just seemed so weird. But um, if... Let's just take a short poll before we move on to the next currency pair, which will be the euro dollar. Let's take a short poll, and you can simply answer by typing in some words on the hotcom window. How many of you have ever traded divergent? If you have traded divergent, just type in the words, Able is awesome. So, yes, okay, lots of divergent. Lots of people have traded divergent. And the Volcker wave <laughs> often is able. That is really funny. Okay. Um, so if you've traded divergence before, you'll know that you look for uh, higher highs on – well, let's just look for the last example of where we can find divergence on this chart. I love you guys. I just think you guys are the best. Just super awesome. I mean, <laughs> probably the best people ever. Okay. Uh, divergence takes place when a currency pair makes – in this instance, a higher high on price. So the candles are rising. Howsomever, 
the oscillator of choice. The oscillator of choice is making lower highs. So, hmm, you say, that's divergence. That's an early warning sign that a currency pair is probably topped out and probably can't go any further. Well, if you use the MACD settings of 9, 12, whatever, I don't even know what the normal settings are anymore. What are the normal settings? 12, 26, and 9? Yeah, whatever. 12, 26, and 9. If you use those settings, they're so fast that it shows divergence all the time. It shows it on Valentine's. It shows it on all the times. It shows it on happy times. It shows it on loving times. Fine. Try to say, I'll see you in an hour. Well, maybe. Unless Ed talks my ear off. And um, it'll do it on Groundhog Day. And you'll see so much divergence that you'll never be able to tell the difference, in my opinion between all the different divergences. So by slowing down the MACD and using the 30, 65, and 23, which is one and a half times slower than the other MACD, I slowed it down and I got myself a MACD that wouldn't fire off as many divergence trades and when it fired off the divergence trades, I was much happier with them. And there you have it. Let's look at an example of divergence in the opposite direction. This currency pair in this instance right here, is making a lower low. But is the MACD is making a lower low as well. That's not divergence. That's what you'd expect. However, Vady, look at this. The currency pair is making a lower low there. Pero, it is making a higher low on the MACD there. And it's an early warning sign that the currency pair could rocket upwards and move up to the 62 and up to the 200 simple moving average and so forth. Okay, so that's a beginner's guide to the subject of divergence. For more on that subject, type in divergence into the internet or wait for my next book to come out, which will probably never be finished. That's the pound dollar. We've now spent an excruciatingly long amount of time on the pound dollar Let's give up on that and let's move to the euro dollar, which I know lots of people trade. And why don't we cycle through the charts on the euro dollar here and see what the business is going on. Look at this. This is an example of divergence. Aren't you glad that we switched over to the euro dollar? We're down on a 15-minute chart. And earlier today, the currency pair was making a higher high on price, but a lower high on the MACD. And lo and behold, the currency pair fell through the 62, fell all the way down to the 200 and the 800 simple moving averages. and that is. An example of divergence. Warren asks, Rob, are the MACD settings aimed at speeding up or slowing the signal? Definitely, definitely aimed at slowing the signals. You have a brilliant question, a sharp mind. I want to give you the sharpest mind of the group award today and just um, ask everybody if they give you a round of applause. Too bad we can't make any sounds here. Chris, I don't know if I got these numbers correct, but it looks to me like the one hour euro dollar has been away from the 800 for quite some time. I don't know, Chris, if you agree with that or not, but um, but that's what I'm thinking. In a Bloomberg poll, the general consensus is the MACD is the most reliable. Wow. Check that out. So it's uh, the... I don't know if I got the numbers exactly right. It's over a thousand candles though. This currency pair has been away from the 800 simple moving average for a long time. End profit. Yes, it is based on backtesting. Every word that comes out of my mouth with regards to stuff that I do is based on backtesting. Absolutely, yes. Look at the dollar and we'll take a look at this divergence. See, on the one hour chart recently, the currency pair made a lower low on price. But meanwhile, on the MACD, it made a higher low. So when the currency pair crossed above the 62 exponential moving average, it was an early warning sign that the currency pair would probably high move all the way to the 200 or all the way up to the 800 simple moving average. Bye. And that's um 
pretty much awesome. I leave spla 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 I leave the um, MACD settings 3065 and 23 when I use it. I leave it on that setting all the time on every currency pair and on every time frame. I don't change the 3065 and 23 according to time frame ever because I'm not trying to approximate one chart's view onto another chart. I'm trying to see each chart as its own uh, separate blah, 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 whatever I just said. Okay. The euro dollar then popped up above the uh, one hour 62 and the one hour 200 tip of moving average. It is absolutely extraordinarily common for it once it has done that to fall back down immediately and take a really quick turn back down to the 62 and the 200 tip of moving average. And once it does that, it typically also can make a uh, bounce back upwards all over again. So let's talk a minute, just one minute, 60 seconds, no longer, 120 half seconds. Let's go down to some other time frames and let's take a look at what we would do. Could we buy the currency pair on a bounce back up? Could we sell the currency pair if something else goes wrong? What shall we do? Let's look at the five minute chart and see if we see anything interesting. Well, in the five minute chart, the currency pair looks like it wants to fall and hit the 800 simple moving average, which is this dashed black line at the bottom. Check it that out. The currency pair not only is falling towards it, but it's doing a fairly good job of that. If the currency pair falls below, and this is a short term scalping type trade, 3684, I'm going to guess that it's going to fall 20 pips all the way to the 800 simple moving average. Now, there's no guarantee that that currency pair is going to fall and hit that 800 simple moving average just yet. In fact, sometimes the currency pair will fake us all out by falling towards the 800 simple moving average and not turning around, I mean, and not going all the way there, but turning around and going back up the other way. It's a cheater and a false thing and a whatever. It's like Joe Lieberman switching parties or whatever he did. It is a turncoat, and you can always tell that that's going to happen by seeing the currency pair turn around and rise above the 62 exponential moving average. That's red, and if it does that, that means, in my opinion, that this currency pair is going to turn around, go back up, and probably not only hit the 200 simple moving average, but go much further than that. So let's go back to the one-hour chart and talk about this once more because I've said a lot of things, and I'm not putting them in order, and you're probably confused, and if have probably just made this the last webinar with me that you'll ever attend. The currency pair on the one hour chart has just gone above the 62 and the 200 simple moving average on the divergence trade, and it is now coming back down and retesting the 62 and the 200 simple moving average. That's super common. It happens all the time. It happens on Valentine's and Groundhog times and all kinds of other times, and it usually then pops back up a bit. If not a lot, it pops up a bit, and if it's not going to resume the downward trend, it's going to pop back upwards, and it could pop back up so far so far that it reaches the previous highs that the currency pair made when it pops back up above the 62 and the 200 simple moving average. But how are we going to structure a trade? How are we going to do that? How would we know? How would we get into something like that? It sounds delicious. So if it sounds as delicious to you as it sounds to me, I would wait until the currency pair goes above the 62 exponential moving average, closes above that level. A candle closing above that level means that a candle body is white or the color of a bullish candle on your chart, and part of the candle body has closed and finished above the 62 exponential moving average. If it does that, then that's a buy trade for me. A stop loss can get moved to break even. That's an awesome thing when the currency pair gets the 200 simple moving average. It's simply a place that we can manage our risk and reduce the risk associated with being in the trade in the first place, and then we can get up all the way possibly to the previous high up at 37.80, and that makes us happy. However, if the currency pair falls and goes down below this previous low, it's probably going to hit the 800 simple moving average, and that could be a short-term scalping trade back down to the 800 simple moving average. My 62 exponential moving average is exponential. It's exponential because it's exponential. One time my daughter peed on the floor of the bathroom and I said, Peanut, why did you do that? And she said, I peed on the floor because I peed on the floor. And the answer is it's a 62 exponential moving average because it's a 62 exponential moving average. Um, and that's what we tested. We just liked how that worked better um, than anything else that we used. 
Okay. Now that we've looked at the euro dollar and we've talked about it a bit, I want to talk about the fundamental picture. And I want to talk about the euro dollar, um, not necessarily the pound dollar, but the euro dollar from a fundamental or um, uh, practical standpoint. The euro dollar fell again um, during this week. I mean, the, the thing has just been absolutely crushed. But then uh, we ranged back and forth overnight, and we actually, from yesterday all the way into today, and if you go back as far as, oh, let's say last uh, Wednesday or so, we've had a, a pretty significant rebound. In an interview that I did with Forex TV, that's ForexTV.com, with Julie Sinha, I have been talking about uh, the euro rebounding for about the last two weeks or so. I think that what we're finding is that the the rest of Europe, although grudgingly so, is probably going to come to the rescue of Greece. Now, they're not going to want to do it. There's going to be all kinds of, you know, interim discussions and problems and whatever else. But generally speaking, I think that it's reasonable to say that the that they're going to come to the rescue of Greece. Now, if they don't come to the rescue of Greece, then that dismantle that's that's the first brick out of the wall and I would I would venture to say we're going to see massive massive losses in the euro. I think we'd see the euro fall as far as a dollar 32. If they don't bail Greece out, it will fall to a dollar 32. Period. End of story. You can as soon as it goes through these lows down here um I would just sell the currency pair and go down 300 pips, period. End of story. That's a fundamental story that you just can't avoid, and it would take everything else over. The problem is, um, the, the problem is if you can't, if you don't eat your meat, you can't have your pudding. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? You can't have that fundamental trade without the meat of the story getting put out. And that meat of the story getting put out isn't, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a, an article that says Germany refuses to bail out Greece. Euro, you know, boom. It's going to be something more subtle, like deliberations continue and traders are going to get concerned and traders are going to get worried and traders are going to become skeptical that anything's going to happen. So you would combine technicals and fundamentals. You'd read sketchy stories like the one we just talked about. That said, you know, there's reluctancy on the on behalf of the Germans, and then you'd wait for a technical break below 35, 28 or so, and then you'd throw a party, you'd put a hat on and get one of those kazoo's, and uh, you might get yourself a, a cooler full of your favorite beverage. You'd sell the currency pair below that level. You'd put a stop up above 35, 50, and then you'd just ride that sucker down to 3250, 3200, even put some. Uh, put some tender loving care on that profit target to make sure that you account for the spread and then you just let that thing go. Um, cause no one's gonna sort of give you an engraved invitation to sell the euro. Howsomever, if we see that there are rumblings that Germany and France in particular are gonna bail this country out and it's a beautiful country and the food is spectacular, why wouldn't you bail out a country like that? If they're gonna bail them out and you see this currency pair jump back up like we've talked about earlier today, then I think you're going to see the currency pair go past a dollar thirty eight um on the way back up. I think you're going to see this currency pair go to thirty seven eighty, which is our profit target, and you're going to see it go past thirty eight hundred, and you're possibly going to see the currency pair go all the way back up to a dollar forty. And at that point I would have no further questions, Your Honor. Let me look at some of these questions. Why should they, since the previous government skimmed most of the money away? Ed, that's a great question. That's a great question. That is a great question to bring up with Glenn Beck. I'm sure he would commiserate with you. Uh, would we be going back to the DMFR IRP lira? Never. It's never going to happen. If that happens, the euro will go to zero, zero. The currency markets will be embroiled in massive controversy. Only And the only humans left on the earth will be Goldman Sachs employees. And, and they will be rich, but they'll have nowhere to spend their money because everyone else will be dead. If that happens, if it starts to break down and they say, forget it, we're, we want out, the euro will, will drop a thousand pips each day for three days, and it will be mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together. Tell them about the Twinkie. It was an accounting error. Honestly, 10 billion in currency swaps to postpone debt payments. We forgot we did that. Hi, Rob. Please, how do you determine your stop loss? Is it a technical point? Jez. Um, okay. Jez, 
here's what I do. I usually look for an area of previous support or resistance. If I were going to buy the euro dollar above the 62 exponential moving average on the five minute chart, I'm going to take the previous low of 36.85 and I'm going to put a stop loss 10 or 15 pips lower than that. So I just use an area of previous support or resistance. Do I see the euro going down to a dollar 15? Asks Nakisi. That is an awesome name. Yes. But don't trade that. I mean, take it easy. You know, don't, don't try to put some huge trade on. Never take a huge trade and act like you're going to ride it out for like ever. Um, Goldman is really the Fed with Ben pulling strings. Probably true. Can Greece be thrown out of the euro? Yes, it can be thrown out of the eurozone. It won't be, but it can be. If it gets thrown out of the eurozone, if that's what happens, the euro will fall to $1.15. I mean, that would just be massive controversy because then there would be speculation as to whether Spain and Italy are going to get kicked out. And I don't know why you'd kick out the countries with the best food. I don't know why you would do that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Kick out the countries with the worst food first. Greece will jump before they get kicked to save face. That's probably a very insightful comment. Do I look at pick volume? No. EU should invest to get Goldman Sachs' role in helping Greece to falsify their account. Geez, uh, when are we going to quit with investigating financial firms? Um, which is the best place to buy prime property in Greece, guys? Remember, boy, I'd love to go live in Greece. Blackbird! What about all that stuff the instructors on FX Street site said about the euro dollar 170 to 180? Is this all gone with Greece? Blackbird! Uh, at the same time they were saying that, I was saying a dollar thirty seven. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like that. I didn't Oh gosh, Curtis, tons of people said it. When I was at the Barcelona FX Street conference, I was like the lone like perfect I was like the lone person at the table who was like, No, I think the Euro's gonna go down to a dollar thirty seven. And it just sounded stupid at the time. But um, you know, all these things came out. I mean the truth came out. The truth shall set you free. Where did they get their idea from? Blackbird, I think they got their ideas about bullish euro stuff from technical analysis primarily. So they were looking for retracements to go to a, a previous level that was back up above. And I believe that they, they thought that Europe was better positioned to withstand a financial crisis across the world. But the problem was that the banking system in Europe still has problems that we don't know about. And um, that still hasn't gotten flushed out of the system. Yeah, Ed, Ed, your your comments are spot on. Thanks, Ed. Thank Ed. Okay, uh, our short trade on the euro is open, and um, do do what you want. Greece is the word. It's the word. It's got groove. It's got meaning. It's the time. It's the place. It's the motion. It's where we have feeling, I think. I think that's what it has. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Greece has. Greece is the word. Okay. Um, I would like to, um, I would like to now look at one more currency. And since we all love the pound yen, let's look at that. Hope you sold the euro. Hope you got a piece of that action. Did you know that a piece of the action, that phrase, I was just reading Chris in the book, Ascent of Money comes from the Joint Stock Corporation in uh, in uh, Holland and Amsterdam. And in Amsterdam, when they created the Joint Stock Corporation, they gave you a piece of the action, which was a Dutch word, and it was a piece of the stock or a piece of the ownership of the company, and they called it like getting a piece of the action. So I just thought that you'd want to all know that. And now you're all like way smarter than when we began this webinar which is almost over and coming to a an eventful conclusion porque porque el pound yen es divergent es slightly divergent we have a currency pair making higher highs on price but lower highs on the macd on the 15 minute chart the currency pair if it falls below and closes below the 62 exponential moving average that creates a divergence trade that goes down to the 200 simple moving average howsomever this is a 15 minute chart and if the currency pair instead 
goes above the highs, above 143.61. I think this currency pair is headed easily for 144. I'd buy the currency pair at one, in fact, I have orders to do this. I'd buy the currency pair at 144.70 with a 30 pip profit target at 144 even. Action is the word for stock in many languages. No kidding. Wow, that's absolutely fascinating. So that's the 15 minute view of the pound yen. Here is the one hour view of the pound yen. Do you see that this currency pair is trying to stretch its way up to the 800 simple moving average on the one hour chart? It might not get there and it might be too early for that to happen. But I think that that's exactly what's starting to play out here is that this currency pair is making an early attempt to get up to 145 even where the one hour 800 simple moving average is um, located. Secret myth. Secret myth, will you marry me? I don't know. That's just the name of somebody in the in the webinar. That's a, that's quite the name. Secret myth. Um, I'd like to offer secret myth if you'd like to give us the give us an idea of what currency pair you'd like to look at next. We have bonus round time available. Look at whatever currency pair you want to look at. Even if it's a male. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what secret myth looks like. Um or Dave Tarver, what currency pair would you like to look at? Jez, you're not secret myth. Jez, I didn't I didn't offer you the chance to choose the currency pair. You're out of line, Jez. Dave Tarver asks, he wants to see the, the gross domestic product of Switzerland. Excellent, Dave Tarver. Let's look that up. Oh, pound Swiss. You got it. <laughs> Everybody who's not secret myth is answering. Where's secret myth? No problem, Jez. I'm just joking around. I'm so happy you all are here. I wish that you'd bring all your friends and come every day. Okay, I'm going to answer two questions. One is, why is secret myth so secret? And why is it a secret myth? That's like two layers. That's like two layers of mystery. Like one, it's a secret, and then one, it's also a myth. It's just, ah, oh, just entrancing. Okay. What is this radar screen, Peter, that entices you and draws you in, makes you want it? That radar screen is the Boss Later radar screen. You can get more information by going to robbooker.com and clicking on Boss Later. Or I think you can even go to robbooker.com slash Boss Later. Okay, Secret Myth is not answering, so I have now disconnected Secret Myth. Yeah, Secret Myth is gone. Um, they're not going to talk to me? I'm not going to talk to them. Here we go. This is the pound Swiss for Dave Tarver. Dave Tarver, this one's for you. For all you do, this currency pair is for you. The one hour chart is sort of going sideways around the 800 simple moving average and barely just recently kind of broke out. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the currency pair came back down, Dave Tarver, and retested the 800 simple moving average and also retested the weekly pivot for that matter and continued to create a range around the 800 simple moving average which looks not so surprisingly like a surprise trade. So I'm, I'm expecting range bound trading range bound for the time being. However, if the currency pair rises up the top above the top of this box and even rises up a little bit further than that above the high so above 69.50 I think this currency pair will stretch out its legs and go all the way for 7,000 fairly easily and that would be a trade that would actually be a trade it would be and if you wanted a piece of that action that would be how you did it now if the currency pair falls and falls through the bottom of the box um, that bottom of the box stretches to the 800 simple moving average simply because that's a reasonable place to put it. Um, 
make that border the 800, then the currency pair could fall to the previous low of 65.90, and that's what I that's that's what that's my view of this currency pair right. Any other last questions? Not about a currency pair, but about anything else that's on your mind, folks. A big secret myth came back. Hi, secret myth. If you're back, welcome back. If you are, yeah. Hi, secret myth. Good to have you back. Okay. Um. Oh, I don't have any songs that I can play today. What a bummer. I'll do it next week for sure. Absolutely. We'll have my son, my five-year-old son, will help us with the webinar next week. Anything, any other questions, comments, or jokes before we go? Five, four, three, two, one. No, it's okay. Secret myth. We love having you here. Always come back. You're always welcome. It was just a joke. And uh, we just talked about the pound swiss. We said that if it went above this orange zone, above 69.50, we'd buy it to a dollar seventy. Or excuse me, one dot seven thousand. And if it fell down below the bottom of that box and below the eight hundred simple moving average on the one hour chart, we would trade it all the way down to the previous low designated by that red line down at sixty five hundred. What happened to Dave? Dave went on to other things. Do we have time to look at the Aussie dollar? Unfortunately no. Thank you, M M C O P T one close fancy parentheses. Secret Swiss. Are there many more chart schools? Not right now. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Be here next week. Thanks for joining us. I love you guys. You're the best. Have a great day. And um, don't forget to um, be awesome, as you always are. And Muhara, I'm going to do a big, huge, huge webinar on reducing leverage. And it's coming up within a week. I'm going to do a big, fat webinar about it and talk about all my views on the subject.